Okay, folks, today is the 23rd of December, 2020. Here on my workbench, I have a completely disassembled Shibara S753 one liter three cylinder diesel engine that was removed from a 1986 Ford 1310 compact tractor. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, this particular engine is a unicorn. Um, parts for these engines um, are not quite unobtainable, but they are very expensive. Uh, this particular engine, uh, this tractor actually came with a brand new engine block in the box because the block had frozen and busted. So we thought we would just swap out the block, but it turns out that, that it had been apart previously and some shade trees really ham-fisted this thing really badly. It was really screwed up. All the pistons and connecting rods were assembled backwards. Uh, there was no oil pressure because the O-ring that goes around the oil pickup tube right here on the end um, had been cut when it was installed, so it was sucking air. Never had any oil pressure. And to make matters worse, the crankshaft had been reground 10 under on the mains and 20 on the rods, um, which really, really increases the price of the replacement bearings. Uh, a replacement bearing set for this crankshaft is almost $800. Um, so anyway, uh, the engine was run very briefly um, after it was overhauled before the crack on the block was discovered internally. And so, the bearings were all wiped pretty good, but not totally destroyed. Um, I ended up with a little more than 20 thousandths clearance on just about all the bearings as a result. Um, these crankshafts are so small, uh, they're not really repairable by traditional means. Um, they don't fare well with a weld repair on the journal because the journals uh, the rod journal is only an inch and a half, and the main journal is just over an inch and three quarter. So uh, they just don't do well with a weld repair. Um, so what I am doing here is shimming the bearings with a soda can. Um, I have done this before successfully over the years. Um, Typical soda can material is just about five thousandths of an inch thick. So by shimming these bearings, I'm adding about ten thousandths to them, which they're still going to be a little bit loose. Um, but I mean, I don't know if you can see that in there or not, but basically, I cut a shim to fit behind both bearing halves and then I filed the ends of the bearing so that they fit together more closely um, once it's all bolted together. And I have reduced my crankshaft bearing clearance from 20 thousandths to just under 10 thousandths of an inch, uh, which I know everybody's gonna balk. That's still pretty loose, but that's what I'm dealing with here. We're not going to spend $700 for a set of replacement bearings for this thing. It's just not worth it. No, nope. that's all. Okay, I'm going to attempt to position this camera so that I can show exactly how I cut these shims for these bearings. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not. Anyway, here, here's a piece of the soda can that I have cut. It's the same width as my bearing insert. And I'm gonna fit it on the back of this bearing half here and cut it to length. I don't know if I'll be able to, to do this or not here. I'm gonna try to 
position my phone so that so that y'all can see this. You see the little lip here? This is the catch that keeps the bearing from spinning in its seat. And so the shim can't cover that because it'll interfere with how it fits. So I, I position the, the edge of the shim just below where that little scallop is. And then I hold it in place here and I fold it around to the back edge of the bearing tightly. And then uh, I fold it over like this on the edge. And then that makes a crease in it right there. And then I just cut it at the crease. And then I am left with the correct length piece of shim stock to fit behind this bearing. So then it goes on there like that and it's it's just the right length. So now then these Shabar engines have a strange main bearing arrangement. This is called a bearing case. It bolts together around the crankshaft and then it fits in a large bore in the back of the engine block. It goes all the way through. It's kind of a weird arrangement. So then, once I have the the bearing installed I mean, I'm going to put the phone down here for a minute and position position this shim Okay, so now the bearing is installed in this main cap with the shim behind it. I have to poke the holes, the oil holes out and clear them out. And then, I don't know if you can see in this video or not, it's probably not, it's not going to focus for me here. Uh, just barely. Anyway, the, the edge of the bearing insert is now sticking up just a little bit uh, because I have put a 10,000 stick shim behind it. That amount that is sticking up there will need to be filed off smooth so that I can effectively reduce the inner diameter of this bearing. If I put this together without filing those, the ID of the bearing would not be reduced at all and the bearing cap would not clamp together completely and it just wouldn't work out. It would defeat the whole entire purpose of putting a shim behind it. Um, like I said, I have done this before uh, successfully and it works. So we'll try it again.